What's up guys, Michal from Tech Test Tutorials and in today's video we are going to take a look what options do we have when we would like to install the FreeNAS on the older hardware. Which version is the most appropriate for the hardware that you have, which give you the most option and what are the problems that you might encounter. Let's take a look, shall we? Now probably the first thing you should do is go to the forum for freenas.org and take a look at all the versions that are available right now and it starts from version uh, 8.0.1 up to the newest uh, release uh, 9.3 I guess 0.2 or something along, along those lines. Um, if your PC is, uh, if you are going to do a ZFS installation, so you've got a one gig uh, of RAM for uh, each terabyte of storage, then you should try uh, either use 8.3 uh, or you should uh, try to choose uh, the newest version, the 9. But if you got a pretty crappy PC, uh, which I guess down the bottom you can see right now on the screen uh, with the older Celeron and uh, one gig of RAM and what the hell even a very small uh, amount of memory to install the system you could try to choose uh, 0 0.7 which is which refers also as the 7 version now all the guys from the forums are most probably start to yell at me because uh, the version 7 is obsolete it's not going to you are not going to be protected against uh, vulnerabilities in ssh and all that stuff but when you are keeping your nas behind a firewall and uh, really that's the way you should do it well probably you could take advantage of uh, of a software right and the software right with this version 7 can be built upon a pretty old hardware so 2.5 gigahertz Celeron dual core with 1 gig of RAM should be easily uh, be able to handle let's say 5 6 uh, terabyte of storage this is not the safest way you can do um, this shouldn't be done if you are going to uh, to run this uh, for a business this could be done if you are uh, if you have always a complete copy of all your data uh, I have been doing so for quite a long time uh, as, a, as a backup uh, without uh, amazing performance and uh, all that stuff but hey it's doable so I'm here to tell you that it's doable just be aware you should always have a copy because most probably the software write is the worst solution uh, aside from storing all the data on OneDrive. So I think always uh, storing the data on Array um, on write 5 for example is a little bit better idea uh, than, uh, than storing this uh, on OneDrive. And now with that being said, uh, you have been warned, uh, you should always have copy but uh, if you are going to do something insane like this, the version 0.7 is for you. Now during the software installation there are some tools that might become handy and one of them is uh, either gparted uh, or parted magic or something along this line because um, sometimes when you are dealing with uh, older drives uh, maybe you have pulled them from another array, maybe you have done uh, some terrible, terrible mistakes during creation of a volume and there's this data that are stored on, uh, on these drives. Uh, FreeNAS will be perfectly capable of seeing, well, this is drive from an array and I'm not going to write upon this drive. And you can uh, go around here by using some SSH command, though it's uh, pretty complicated, might be above your head. So the easiest uh, scenario here is use a parted magic or something like this to uh, both uh, erase all the data that you are going to use uh, in an array and also do a perform a smart test. If you are going to use not a drive that it's new, you should always try to start a smart test in order to be sure that the drive you are installing is in a perfect condition. So 
These tools are also handy, download them, uh, install them on a flash uh, or uh, even on a CD. You can run them, check the drives, delete the drives, then start the installation of the ARRI. Now, if you are going to use also some old-fashioned BIOS, uh, please do keep in mind that they sometimes uh, are showing the boot priority in an odd way. So you have to choose, um, you are installing the FreeNAS on a pen drive and then you are setting up the priority and you are setting up the priority as a first boot drive, it should be a hard drive and then in a hard drive priority you are choosing uh, your, uh, your USB drive as first and then will, you will be good to go. Now I have chose the version 8.3.2 because my system was uh, only 4 gig of RAM. Now if you have a little bit modern system than this, you should choose the version 9. However, the version 8.3.2 allows me to use ZFS, which is a great method, uh, better than a software write, sometimes even better than using a hardware write controller. and. Um, I have shown here a very easy method uh, how you can uh, create ZFS. Now if you got three drives only you have to choose write Z. If you got more than uh, more drives then you can use write Z2. Uh, write Z2 is basically equivalent uh, to uh, write 6. I uh, can imagine this like this and uh, write Z is equivalent to uh, write uh, 5. So. Uh, you are just choosing the drives and this screen capture has been done with a system with multiple drives but uh, in my system I have uh, I had only three drives so uh, you are choosing just those three drives create a volume uh, right C then you have to create a data set and it's like it's a little bit like uh, creating um, SQL server uh, or a, simply a database uh, server where the file system is going to be stored. Uh, you are creating a volume, then you are creating uh, a data set. Uh, after that, uh, you just have to create uh, grabs uh, for, uh, for permissions uh, and users. You are creating user, you are adding this user to a grab, and after that you are giving the uh, on uh, on a data set you are giving the permissions uh, either to write read data as you wish now create your own user and grabs don't mess with those built in because that's uh, easier um, it's a very very easy straightforward system uh, almost like uh, like in windows you have this gui uh, very very straightforward process. After you have creating the, uh, you have created those grabs, users, volume, and data set. Uh, the another thing you have to uh, do is um, you need to start uh, shares. And uh, the way that I have done that uh, is I've created a share for both Mac and Windows. So CIF is for Windows and. Uh, also the Apple uh, protocol for creating this uh, share for Mac and I have created those both uh, of those shares uh, to the same data set which means uh, that I'm going to be able uh, to connect to the data uh, from Mac and from PC uh, from Mac you could do it uh, also by using CIF, uh, uh, CIF share but it's better to create uh, a different share for Mac, easier to discover uh, this from Mac OS system. Now, that's a little bit controversial also because most of the people will tell you that you should have a separate data set uh, for those both uh, shares. However, this works. Uh, keep in mind that uh, Windows and Mac are using a little bit uh, different systems of uh, storing the files. Uh, however, if you are going to do this carefully and you are, for example, just going to store some, uh, some files like photos, movies, and you would like to be able to uh, both copy them from Mac, Windows, you can do it. Um, you can create those uh, 
shares uh, to the same data set however this is not uh, recommended so one thing to to play a little bit for me this was working fine however you have been warned again this is not the perfect uh, perfect solution after that you just have to start the services both for both those shares uh, for Sif, uh, for uh, mac and then start ssh and the reason why you should start SSH is because you are going to SSH to this, um, uh, to, to this NAS uh, in order to be able to scrap the data to control this via SSH with commands. And most of those things you can do from GUI. Uh, however, I encourage you to, to learn a little bit about uh, SSH commands. They are really handy. Um, you can you can scrap the data which means uh, that uh, the CFS system will take a look at all the data that are stored in the pool and will try to read them try to check the data integrity uh, you can have a cron job for that for scrubbing the data you can run this manually um, I have to tell you I run this manually every sometimes because I would like to know where when the data are being scrapped and what was uh, the result of this process. Now let's go and check some benchmarks of this system and I have to tell you those benchmarks are somewhat what I have expected though uh, one thing I wasn't expecting it well uh, at the start when I have built this NAS it was like 130 to 130 both megabytes read and write uh, however after that I have filled uh, that with data let's say to a point where that was a 50% storage occupied uh, the results turned out to be a little bit slower however it's still okay for me and the main reason for creating this video was to show you how easy it is build is it is to build a free NAS box how uh, a lot of fun you can have uh, while you will be doing so I encourage you to try uh, to build the first free NAS of a used hardware that you might have uh, left for after uh, some older office computer like I have or after uh, using uh, an older uh, system that you've upgraded it's a great way to learn uh, it's a great way to to be to know what to expect when once you will be building your um, let's say faster and uh, more appropriate NAS system this was a lot of uh, fun uh, I'm thinking about creating a video about a little bit faster free NAS system definitely hit that like button if you would like to see this leave me a comment uh, whether that you like this video or not what you uh, what would you like to see in the next video what would you do different than I uh, stay subscribed for uh, some more awesome uh, content in the future and thanks again for watching see ya guys